right, everyone, it's 6.30. We've got a long agenda in front of us, so we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. <coughs> the regular school board meeting, June 12th. We're here at the Fairhaven Union High School Middle School Library. Let's first stand for the Pledge of Elite, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so first, um, well, I guess I'll first start out by saying that um, there are refreshments over here. Um, in the event that this meeting should drag on, I, I certainly would be open to a, a very brief intermission for people to use the restroom or <coughs> grab a snack. So please just interrupt me if and make a motion to, to intervene if, if we do need a quick break. Um, the first order of business is we do need a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So move. Second. Um, I've got a concern about the agenda. Um, and I've looked at previous June agendas and they're not usually loaded up like this one. Um, and sometimes you have a second meeting in June, sometimes you don't. But What are you looking to do, Kurt? Well, I'd like to uh, maybe put off supervision and evaluation presentation uh, to the next meeting. Well, you actually will get your wish because we are going to, I was going to note that we are going to strike number eight supervision evaluation presentation from the meeting. So that's in discussing with Brooke, that's not ready to be presented tonight. Or it is ready to be presented, but we are going to... We can wait till August. We can wait till the next meeting. Uh, I know, Casey, in your board report, you had some links to that uh, evaluation model. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So information is out there. Should anyone want to look into that before its formal presentation at the next meeting? I guess I would ask, is there anything else that possibly can be cut? Because it, it is a really long agenda. Okay. All right, any other notations, changes to the agenda? So again, we are going to strike number eight. And if there's nothing else, all those in favor of approving with that one amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, looking for a motion to approve the minutes from May 22nd. So motion. Are there any corrections, discussion, comments on those meeting minutes? All right, hearing nothing, all those in favor of approving as presented, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Um, and I've got a lot of notes here tonight, so just allow me a few moments every now and then to keep myself in order. Um, so number four on the agenda is the opening of the construction bids. So I will turn it over to Chris Cole. Okay. Tim, I believe we have one bid from um, Breadloaf Construction. There's a gentleman here from Breadloaf. Um, so being this is the first time we've actually done like a public bid opening at a board meeting, Tara. He handed the, the packet to Tara right before the meeting as clerk. Uh, so Tara has a sheet that she can go through that'll have the bid specs in it, the pricing, um, the different options. And then my plan is to take that back and evaluate it with our architects um, and come back with a recommendation later on in the meeting. So can you speak to how that relates to number 19 on the agenda, which is bid approval. Are we looking to approve something tonight? Yeah, we're looking to approve the bid tonight. So she's expected to read the entire bid here in front of us all? Yep. Okay. And then we'll have a summary and a, a recommendation okay. later in the meeting. Okay. So she'll just present the information now. Yep. We'll go about our business and then later on, I'll come back. I'll have you'll come back. Copies for everybody of the bid. Okay. And recommendation. Go ahead, Tara, what do you got? Oh, I can open it now? Yep. Woo! There we go. Christmas. What's that, guys? It's a big secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What am I actually reading Is off? Is there like an executive bit? summary on it or something? Um, there is. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. Um, I can just say the the bid the bid information um, from the Breadloaf Corporation uh, for the Fairview Union High School Middle School Classroom Renovation here at 33 Mechanic Street. Um, the architect Black River designed the certification and base bid. So is this here? Yeah, so there's your base bid. 1.6. Is that when am I reading that right? 1618. Yep. So one million six hundred and eighteen thousand. Okay. And then you want me to read the bid guarantee? Was that part of this as well? Yep. So there's the bid guarantee is in it so that's included yep so the big guarantee is in there and it looks like that's five percent of the bid yeah okay okay keep going uh do you want me to say that who they are yeah. okay yeah. so the project team is project manager would be tom somerset and the job superintendent is scott dearborn um it looks like there are some subcontractors and suppliers. So for the plumbing work, it's uh, you first. Havac work is you first. Electrical work is CD Electric. Uh, date of commencement is going to be August 7, 23. Time of completion would be the underside proposes hereby. December 15th, 2023. Oh, we don't need to read that then. Okay. So there's some acknowledgments um, here for the addendum. Uh, the first one, because you do have that on that there's list. Three of them. Yep, that you need. So number one is dated 525-23. The second one's 6-2-23. And the third one is 6623. There's only one other spot. The percentages. The, mar the markup there? Yeah. You want that? Yeah. So the markup percentage. So the percentage for uh, labor markup is 12%. Material percentage markup is 12%. <clears throat> and subcontractor percentage markup is 12%. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. And that's pretty much it, yeah. That's all you need off yep. it right now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, because the rest I think is just about the company there, the bid bond. Okay. You good? Yep. Okay. So you want this as well? Yeah, Do I still need to fill this out? No, I, I got it here. Okay. I'll bring that back, Phil, though. Thank okay. You. Thanks. And that was the only bid. That was, that was handed to me. Yep. So no other action at this time, Chris? Nope. Okay. All right. Thank you for opening that bid, Tara. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, we'll move on to number five, which is public comment. I'll first start with our online audience. Is there anyone attending virtually who has a public comment? No. And any public comment for anyone here in person tonight? No public comments. Okay, next correspondence. I have not received any correspondence. Brooke, have you? Mm -mm. Number seven is student presentation. I'll hand it over to Ben Worthing, principal for introductions. Sure, uh, thank you. Yep. So I have uh, Cheryl Nedzwicki with us today with two of her students. Uh, Samuel St. Peter and Julia Pukowski. Sorry, I did that with a W. There's no W in it though. Um, they're, they're here to present on the work placement and work-based learning. And so I know there's a few things that Ms. Nisbicki would like to hand out and so I'll come around and pass those out while they, they begin their presentation. If you guys are in the corner here, right? Yep, so they can hear you online. All right. Am I good to start? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm Samuel St. Peter. I'm a current high school student, senior at Fairhaven Union High School. Um, currently, I'm a work-based learning student up at uh, Relton City Fire Department. So pretty much what I do up there, I'm up there every other day from 9.30 to 5.30, just about, so eight hours a day. 
been doing this for two years now up there, doing work-based learning and at Ralton City Fire. Uh, I it can think of being up there, going on emergency calls, doing trainings, doing public education, and doing public social life, socializing with the public, just getting overall being with the public. I've learned many different skills about being with people, learning everything that I can be about firefighting and the emergency services. And what I've learned from being up there is I'm a much more open person than I used to be. You can ask my mom. I used to be a very shy person, not very open about anything. But being up at Ralton City Fire has really helped me open up and be a better overall person. Being up there has made it like a second family. Like today I'd have say goodbye to one of my shifts and I started tearing up because I've been with them for the past two years now. And it's been a very eye-opening experience. I've learned that I've wanted, I want to do firefighting as a professional career. I'm currently accepted into Southern Maine Community College for a fire science degree. And I will actually be living up in a station, Gorham Fire Station, as a living student, going to college still and having college paid for all at the same time being a living student. As a living student, I will be responding to calls and doing everything that I did up at Relton City. So Relton City has really prepared me for the real world of firefighting. And honestly, I would not change it for the world. And I want to thank my work-based learning coordinator for doing this for me and being there every step of the way and help and supporting me and overall giving me good de deadlines and helping me through and making myself reflect on what I've been doing up at the Ralton City Fire Department. Does anyone have any questions or comments? He's <laughs> great. Yep. Yes, That's excellent. excellent. Yeah. I just want to tell you how proud all of your Benson family is. The kids at school think that you are amazing and oh, yeah. you have opened the door for so many of them to think beyond maybe what they would have done. So we are very proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>
to broader pathways I hadn't even thought of pursuing. Responsibility and maintaining self-awareness is very key to this class. Anyone interested in taking it should enter with an open mind and a readiness to learn. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say there's a lot of information in the report I gave you, but hopefully it'll, it gets, you know, some information out there. I'm not going to go over it, but uh, the one thing that I left out is we had over 28 businesses that were involved in work-based learning. So we have work-based learning that um, Sam talked about. Then we have career exploration, which I just um, read uh, from a student. And then we have Julie, who um, is in the entrepreneurship class. So when you look at work-based learning as a cluster, there's four different ways that you can you can learn, and those are three of the four. The other one is training, um, which kind of our work-based learning, like Sam did, that goes into the training as well. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to to uh, tell you was that those 28 businesses um, they come from Fairhaven, Rutland, Middlebury, Castleton, and Shoreham. So, um, and then some of the students already had jobs, um, some didn't. Some um, are going to keep going over the summer, um, some will move on. So, any questions? I had a quick question, sorry I'm on Zoom. Um, but how mm -hmm. many students are participating in work-based learning? So, um, yeah, I need, sorry, you didn't get the, uh, the report. So it's 30. Uh, we had 30 this year all, all together. We had some that only did it for one semester, um, but there were 30. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, as noted, number eight has been removed from the agenda on to number nine, which is the appointing of truancy officers for school year 23-24, which is required per policy C7 uh, per the memo attached in our board packet. Brooke is recommending the uh, school resource officers who are Peter Mantello, Dale Kerber, and Ed Hunter to be the truancy officers for 23-24. I would take a motion to that effect. I make a motion. Second. Any further questions or discussion? Okay. Hearing nothing further, all those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <clears throat> Okay, moving next to number 10, which is policies. We do have some business tonight. We have to adopt the attendance policy C7, which was warned at the previous meeting. And I know per John's request, that policy was provided in advance for people to look over. Um, and then I guess I'll just hand it over to Tony. You can kind of go through what else you need to have done and make motions accordingly. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and just adopt that student attendance policy? I'll make a motion to Second. adopt C7 student attendance. Second. Any questions or discussion? Hearing nothing further, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Tony. Um, we have two policies that the state is asking us to adopt or mandating that we adopt, I should say as a result of school safety and the neat thing is Brooke has been involved with these two policies because we have had issues in the past so we've had you know had to take care of things so policy f3 is fire and emergency preparedness and everything that's in there pretty much we already we already do there's just the reporting to the Agency of Education that's new. Anything else? And the one-day notice on and the options-based drills. Uh, that's right. We have to notify parents at least one day in advance of the drills. We don't have to tell them what time the drills are going to occur, but they have to know at least one day in advance. And policy F4 is access control and visitor management. We did have an access control, but it was not as, um, it wasn't stated as, you know, you got to do this, this, this. Mm -hmm. So that I'd like to warn F3 and F4 for our next meeting. Motion to warn those two. Second. Any questions for Tony on warning F3 or F4? 
Hearing nothing further, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And when we adopt F4, we will rescind our F25, which is access control. So I'd like to make a motion to warn to rescind F25 access control. Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anything further, Tony? That's all I have. Okay. And I guess if we could just make sure that the board gets uh, F3, F4, and F25 in advance of the next board meeting for review, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to number 11, which, which is the central office report, which was in our packet. Does anyone have any questions for the administrators? Got one. Sure, go ahead, Peter. How's FFA going? Going well. Uh, so we took our first trip to the state convention, I guess, competition, and rode the bus to Randolph to then find that we needed to get on another bus for the mm -hmm. students to compete, um, judging the cows that they were going to look at over in Rochester. So they were on for an hour and a half, took another 45-minute bus ride to the farm, be off for an hour, because then we had to get back so that the bus driver could do the afternoon run. So even with all of that shuttling around, uh, I don't know, I threw some pictures in there, middle school students and high school students went, um, the high school students that competed finished second overall um, in the competition and are headed to Eastern States um, at the Big E. And uh, so there's 20 students that are still engaged Many of the middle school students just went just to kind of experience and what it was for the first time. Um, they didn't even get lunch and they were wonderful. We arrived back at two o'clock and I had called on the way to make certain to get five pizzas from Liberty so they could eat when we returned and they were perfect the entire time. Um, really neat opportunity for students. Um, there are curricular components that may or may not eventually make their way into, say, horticulture or something. But at this point, it's a club um, in 7 through 12, and uh, there's a lot of kids that are interested in agriculture um, in our community, so it's nice that they have the opportunity. I would say, well, kids me a little bit. It's amazing what you can do with YouTube when no one owns animals that is actually judging them and then finishes second. So um, credit to Andrew Levesque, the guy who's the advisor, and then just watching YouTube and looking at handouts. One of the own cows. And we were up against Hannaford Career Center and Middlebury. And we still fared okay. <laughs> Glenn. I know you are. <laughs> and Brooke attended. Um, it was awesome. I'd say when we walked into this space at VTC, I anticipated kind of huge crowd of people, and there weren't many people. I would say. <laughs> Aside from the FFA advisors, we were the only other two that were kind of just there to take it all in. So, um, yes, as an aside, we're riding over. Someone in the back says, Mr. Mayor, do you think you can have the bus driver turn on the radio? And I'm like, sure. So the radio goes on. Then they're like, hey, can you turn it to, what is it, 101? Is it WOKO or something like that? Anyway, Country Western. Yeah. We cruise into VTC with Country Western. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it's at. Um, no, it was lovely. Um, variety of kids, you know. Um, anyway, as you can tell, highlight of mine. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Pete. Thank Any other questions for administrators? Nope. Thank you for putting it together, though. Very helpful. Yeah, and I just want to echo on comments made by both Brooke and Chris Cole in recognizing our retirees this year. I'll read their names quickly. Rodney Bachelet, Nancy Ward, Pam Arell, Suzanne Reedy, Tony Christensen, Dale Martin, Lonnie Solomon, Arlene Disorda, Colleen Hebler, Ann Janier, Jane Rydell, Ann Pierce, 
And Vicki Shattuck, certainly we thank you for your year's service with the district and congratulations. Okay, if nothing else, we'll move on from the central office report to number 12, which is job descriptions. I don't have them on me, but there were two that needed uh, approval. Is that correct, Brooke? Yes. Um, one should be the administrative assistant for school counseling, and then there should just be school-based administrative assistant. Um, so um, the administrative assistant for school counseling, um, the, the only difference is that they also perform clerical duties for 504 coordination and um, HHB pieces. Um, that that's different from the school-based administrative assistant. And then our old job descriptions had our Sue still listed in there. So it's just updated to reflect Slate Valley. Um, we're trying to go through all those job descriptions and update them. As you know, six years ago, we didn't have any job descriptions. Mm -hmm. So we did them all and now we're in the process of revising them all again. So we need action to approve those updated listings? Yep. I move to approve. Second. Any further questions or discussion on those two position descriptions? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? All right, next we need to consider um, increasing the rate for nurse substitute pay. It's been recommended by Brooke to increase it by $3 from current year 30 to $33 for next year. There was a memo in our packet. I would take a motion to accept that. I'll make a motion to raise the nurse substitute pay in FY24 from 30 to $33 per second. hour with a three hour minimum. And a second from Christine. Is there any questions or discussion? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay, as Cheryl mentioned in her central office reports, and as some board members have already signed, we need to approve tax anticipation line of credit. Make a motion so I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the tax anticipation line of credit um, from M&T Bank for the period of July 5th, 2023 until December 29th of 2023 in the amount of $2 million. Uh, the interest rate is 4.85%. And in the past, um, <clears throat> sometimes we've used it, quite often we haven't. Um, but just in case, you know, bills come in and we haven't received money from the state and it's coming it's the ability in order to draft from that so that we can cover our expenses and that will be um, paid back when taxes come in in the fall is that a motion because that's second. a motion yes. i'll second any questions on the line of credit hearing none all those in favor of approving please say aye aye, aye. any opposed and again, as mentioned per Cheryl, we do need to approve the meal prices for fiscal year 23 and 24. I think she explained that uh, the kids' prices are going to remain the same and there's a slight increase for the adults. And I guess if you've got that information there, Glenn, I'll let yeah. you make the motion. So I will make a motion that we approve meal prices. Um, for school year 23-24 as follows. Um, the adult meal prices will be increased by 25 cents. Student, as Tim said, student <coughs> meal prices and milk prices will remain at the same rate. And those rates are <coughs> student breakfast K through six, $1.70. Student breakfast middle slash high school, $1.95. Student lunch, 
milk, 60 cents. And adult breakfast, $3.25. Adult lunch, $5.25. Second. Any questions or discussion on meal prices for 23-24? Hearing nothing, all those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right, so next under a 16 contracts and resignations, uh, first, uh, we have uh, action needed to approve a higher placement for a potential incoming science teacher. I will let Brooke speak to that. Yeah, so I included a memo in your packet per the master agreement 16.6. Um, with the consent of the board, um, I do have the right to retain um, teachers at a higher placement um, than um, the master agreement allows for um, currently. Um, we do not, we have not had any applicants for the science position. Um, that um, we do now ha have an applicant um, from, from Rutland City who would like to come back to Fairhaven. They were previously um, a teacher here um, and were reduced in force because of budget cuts at the time, but they would like to come back to this district. So I am recommending that we hire them at step 10 rather than, the, than step eight, which is assigned um, by the master agreement. However, we do have other te at least one other teacher who's at step 10 with 17 years experience too already um, when you look at the salaries. So it's not out of line with other, other staff. So that would be my recommendation. Is there a motion to accept that recommendation? So moved. Second. Any further questions or discussion? Patty? Not under contract. The, the district's released her. Any additional questions? Hearing nothing further, all those in favor, um, please say aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Um, I will not forget the contracts, Julie, remind me, but yep. uh, we'll go on to subpart B now. Um, authorization for the board chair to sign the contracts. If you could just explain that briefly, Brooke. Yeah, so over the summer where we don't have board meetings, we usually, off you usually authorize the board chair to sign contracts, and then those contracts are placed on the, the August agenda. I make a motion to have the board chair sign contracts. Second. Questions, discussion? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And next we do have six contracts to approve for tonight. Yep, so I make a motion to approve contracts for Lori Renegar, Fairhaven Grade School Elementary Teacher, $50,142. Madeline Morse, Fairhaven Grade School, elementary teacher, $47,304. Caitlin LaPan, um, district-wide health teacher, $47,304. Caitlin Collins, Fairhaven Union Middle High School, English teacher, $55,346. Allison Irons, Fairhaven Union Middle High School, 504 Wind Coordinator, $47,304. And Laura Desjardins, Fairhaven Union Middle High School science teacher, $71,334. Second. Any questions, discussion on these contracts? Hearing nothing, all those in favor of approving, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you to those individuals for coming on board. All right, moving right along. Number 17, warrants. Time to pay some bills, Glenn? Yes. So I would like to make a motion to approve uh, June payments in the amount of 
two million two hundred and fifty eight thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars and seventy two cents second questions or discussion hearing nothing all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. Any opposed okay okay I'd like to make a motion to approve capital reserve expense <coughs> In the Second. amount of $26,816. Second. Questions on capital reserve? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to approve food service bills dated 5-9-5-23-23 in the amount of $78,245.51. Second. Questions on food service? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to approve grants in the amount of $115,960.51. Second. Questions on grants? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to approve high school activity expenses in the amount of $21,350.55. Second. Any questions or discussion on high school student activity? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I'd like to make a motion to approve elementary student activity expenses in the amount of $2,324.42. Second. Questions on elementary student activity. Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oops. Okay. <clears throat> Moving along to the approval of a club potentially, bass fishing. <laughs> Kim, I think I see you here. You can just give us a quick overview. Thank you for having me here, board. Um, just ending my second year as athletic director at Fairhaven Union High School, Kim Alexander, if you don't know who I am. Uh, I s submitted paperwork with Brooke um, requesting that we drop our varsity bass fishing to a club. Um, when, I, when I started here, we started with five kids um, the first year. It did not end well. Um, this past year, we had one student sign up and it didn't, um, there was not a follow through. I've heard from a lot of kids that they want to have fishing, but in order to have a varsity program, we have to have a bass fishing boat. We have to take part in a bass fishing tournament. Um, those that I've reached out to that would be willing to help us with a bass fishing boat, guide our kids, et cetera, um, already take part in a bass fishing tournament that weekend. The VPA has scheduled their bass fishing tournament the same weekend as this, the huge bass fishing tournament. Oh, the LCM. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason, but um, I, I don't know. So we, we beg borrowed the first year. This year we didn't have anybody. And I would like to build this program back up. So what I would like to do is bring it as a club offered to our 7th through 12th graders and find someone that is interested in teaching our students the love of fishing, how to fish, how to use the equipment correctly, how to use lures, how to use correct bait for whatever fish in the body of water that they're going to be in, and then transport our students to Bomazine, Glen Lake, Black Pond, possibly Champlain, um, and let them fish on the banks of our, our bodies of water and learn to love the sport instead of worrying about the fact that we can take two kids on a boat mm -hmm. and hope that they get a fish mm -hmm. that might be big enough to be measured for a championship. Um, and I don't mean to downplay the varsity sport. We just don't have the following right now and we don't have the equipment. So if we can bring that love, then if we can bring, build it back up, then hopefully we can work with some community support and bring it back to a varsity sport and then, you know, show our stuff. So that's why I'm here tonight. I appreciate you listening. And if allowed, I will go forward. We need a motion. 
Yes, please. I'd like to make a motion to accept bass fishing as a club or fishing Second. in general. It doesn't have to be bass. Second. Second. Any questions? So that was my question, Kim, actually. So it's any fishing? I would just like to make it a fishing. A fishing, yeah, right. Fishing. So it's not necessarily bass yeah, fishing. Right. Correct. And then if we, if we do change it back to a varsity yeah. sport, it would be bass fishing because that's, that's what, what they the have. Right. Goal is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Kim, I have a question. Do you anticipate it being possible for a student who plays a full-time fall sport to also be able to participate in a fishing club? So we have a lot of students that duel in varsity sports. Um, we do have kids that have taken part in, um, we've, tried to, we've tried to put together some volleyball and some lacrosse and things like that to, to um, introduce it to our kids. And we've had some of our varsity athletes take part in both. Um, the VPA does say that when you're in a varsity sport, you have to choose one and you have to commit yourself to that varsity sport. And then the second you can go to, if it doesn't interfere. Um, I would like to say, think that we could schedule so that kids could have the best of both worlds. It might not be, if we do fishing three days a week, it might, they might not be able to go all three, but if they could hit some, I would like to think that that would work. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Kim? Well, just as a comment, I mean, at least with fishing, that's something that is an all three all three seasons mm -hmm. because you know you've got fall, winter, if there's ice, and certainly <laughs> you know in the spring. So the kids, you know, they may not participate in the fall, but they could certainly participate in the spring, depending upon what they do for other sports. So I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a wonderful so are you proposing i know you've got written here september to october but you're proposing it could extend throughout the year well i didn't to be totally honest i, I can't take that credit i didn't think of it but <laughs> <laughs> what i would like to do is get it off the ground this year fishing was a fall sport um but if it's something that comes to fruition and our kids are are enjoying it if we can find someone and we're allowed to take kids on ice that would be an amazing thing for them to learn how to ice fish in Vermont and then spring fishing. Um, it would open up opportunities. As I said to kids the other day at Step Up, get involved in something. And it, even if it's fishing one day a week or two days a week, because then that's a lifetime activity. You might also be able to do it in the winter on um, learning how to tie. Yeah, just... And we or fly fishing. And and I know that there's a um, I had students from Orwell that their mom is a fly fisher person that goes around the state and teaches. We you know, I could look into tapping into our resources too. Mm -hmm. Sunset or Sun Sunset Lake is a good place to fish as well. Great idea, thank you. There's Orvis and there's a new place in Pulteney, fishing place in Pulteney too. We'll probably could do some field trips. Too. Very cool. Mike Spannard works for Orvis, so even though he's really with Rowan, he is yeah. right up the road. So. Yeah, that is great. Knowledge. He teaches yeah. he teaches fly fishing like professionally. You know, oh, like wow. he gets paid for it. There's a there's a great group, um, the New Haven River Anglers, that do all fly and they do con they do fly tying classes throughout the year. So mm -hmm. that would be another. Yeah, cool. Casey could probably set you up. Classmates of mine are big in the Yep. Yep. Yeah. This is all great information. Thank you. Cool. All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So there's a motion out there. All those in favor of approving a fishing club under the direction of Kim Alexander, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, so now we go back to Chris Cole to. I haven't okay. seen him yeah, reappear, no, so we like could. Heads up. So. We could do 20 and 21. Okay. 22. So we are going to briefly skip over 19, the bid approval, and go on to number <coughs> 20, which is, I believe, just informational in nature. Cheryl had noted there's no action required, but it's mm -hmm. the. This bit insurance renewal yep. for fiscal year 24. 
she notes that there's a 4.32% increase to a total annual policy of just over $351,000. Again, I believe that was just informational in nature. So if anyone has any further questions on that one, I guess you'd have to reach out and email Cheryl directly. All right. Chris is getting ready. He'll, he'll be here shortly. He's making, making copies. copies. All right. So let's um, a couple other things, Julie. We could consider number 21, cancellation, whether we should hold a scheduled board meeting on the 26th of June or which we've oftentimes done in the past, cancel that board meeting. So that's our decision to discuss and vote upon. Can I make a motion that we cancel the meeting on the 26th? Second. Okay. okay. Do we need to? Is there any reason to have one? No. Not but, right now. But. Yeah, Brooke had mentioned that everything, I mean, uh, any, any business that might come before the board before the end of June is pretty much packed into this agenda. And should there be something that comes up that requires special attention, then certainly we could reconvene. But as of now, there is no no need. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I think Zen meditation magic. Secrets to finding the Sorry time. Sorry about that. And I think most of the administrators and I know possibly some of the board members will be on vacation at mm -hmm. too. So that's always challenging to get a quorum. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a motion in the second. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor of canceling the June 26th board meeting, please say aye. 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 Okay. I guess I'd take a motion to adjourn for five minutes to allow Chris Cole to come back for the bid approval and to just grab some refreshments. So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right, five, two minutes. All right, so everyone's back at their seats. Uh, we're going to now revisit number 19, bid approval. So I'll turn the floor back over to Chris Cole to kind of go over what he's just handed out to us. Yep, so the single sheet of paper kind of summarizes what Tara and I try to get down when we open the bid. <laughs> um, one of the requirements is they have to have a 5% of the project. They have to bond, have the bond in that capacity for both um, did do that. There was three addendums we had done since the original um, bid went out. They acknowledged all three of those. Their base bid was one million six hundred and eighteen thousand. Um, the deduct alternate, which was putting in three windows, sets of windows in the middle school science labs. We had talked about that. Um, so that's what that was. <clears throat> labor material subcontractors if we do any change orders moving forward if we go under contract with them that would be kind of the labor markups 12 percent material 12 percent subcontract 12 percent so that's kind of the you know those costs ahead um data commencements on completion are what we um, had anticipated um subcontractors we worked with before so they're you first has done most of the plumbing um, heating upgrades in the building. And then the printout is just kind of, you know, I think eight, nine pages of what the summary sheet shows. So I had, I had been keeping a hundred, no, not 150, a $1.5 million figure as kind of where our base budget would be. So we're close there. <clears throat> I would recommend that we do take the deduct alternate. So it would decrease the $1.6 million uh, bid down to $1,575,812. Um, and then we'll, we would have to do those windows at a later point. Um, 
kind of in my budget that I'm keeping. Um, next year we'll have, you know, we're going to have the 250,000 coming into the budget and we'll have the 500,000 that was going um, into the reserve account. So I, I'm really close. The variable I don't know yet is the pump station. I'm keeping an amount in the budget for the pump station when we do that. Um, I haven't bid it out yet. So I don't want to necessarily say what that figure is, but um, I'm within 8,000, which I think we can <clears throat> work with within the budget to get the project completed. Minus the windows for the middle school. Uh, questions? Yeah. Um, did I miss when this went through the finance committee? Should it go through the finance committee? It went through building and grounds. We had. Well, you're asking for a dollar amount. And, you know, we, we looked at the food contract. Um, you know, sometimes things go through more than one committee. I don't think we've ever had uh, projects like this always come before the full board they don't go through I mean, we talk Just about them in the five. finance in the building the grounds committee but then once we get a bid or, or a bid it comes before the full board it's 1.6 million dollars uh -huh. and i'm not saying i'm against it it's just a matter of procedure in my mind so can i say i'm confused um so the finance committee the building and grounds is putting forward the project. They're not putting forward the money. They're just putting forward the project. Yeah, and we mm -hmm. talked about the funding in the finance committee as we did the budget. We talked about the 500,000. Yeah. The back, back, back when we in the fall. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. We talked about 250 that. Right. Yeah. I got it backwards. 250 that went to voter approval into the reserve account. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes, and we knew this project right. was coming. Right. And right. the project goes through buildings and grounds because yes. they're right. the one that are talking about where it's going to be, how it's going to fit, what it's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Then the bid comes through the whole board. Right. Right. Yes. I'm well, just trying to understand. I'm fine with that if, you know, That's I missed happened. it because yeah. I wasn't on the board. That's exactly yeah. what happened. That's yeah, this, what happened. this was all right. um, hashed out and was included in the bid that was voted on on town or meeting budget, day yeah. or budget. Yes. so yeah. i mean a lot most of this was hashed out back in when we were last there in the budget mm -hmm. um okay My one thing I, I didn't mention um because there's only one bid that was submitted we would have to get um a waiver from the agency of education so we would but, have to submit that waiver to them which we've done uh, before. We've done that before. I'm comfortable with Bread Loaf. We've worked on them on our last few projects. They do a really good job. Um, if it was a company that we haven't used before, I might be a little less hesitant to uh, recommend, but um, I think they'll do a fine job. Of course. How long do you anticipate AOE to give us the waiver? I believe from the form I saw online today, they have to respond within 10 days. Okay. So, so I don't it would be in time so that this could I believe so, yeah. Mm -hmm. on yeah. Yes. Okay. Chris, I was just wondering if you might explain to the board or, or maybe reconsider the idea of striking the windows out. I, I know windows and getting more natural light into some of those back rooms is important and I think that's been discussed at, at a few other meetings. I mean forty two thousand dollars out of a twenty six million dollar budget. Can we not find that money to get these windows done now? That's up to the board. I would love to do them, but I couldn't recommend it because I don't have the funding under my control currently in the budget to do that. But I think windows would be great. But that put me probably 50 grand under what I have. And like I said, I have, you know, a couple hundred thousand allocated for the sewer pump projects. I don't know where that's going to come in. So there's that one we're going to try to bid by end of the summertime. I mean, can we keep them in there contingent upon these other projects kind of unfolding in time? I mean, how does that process formally work? Fred is going to have to work and get all their contractors and their contracts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably not. I mean, I, I just think with my knowledge of the construction world, the cheapest time to do it 
is now when they're working on it because if we if we postpone it and then come back even a year from now yep. that 42,000 is going to be 85,000 to put those windows in yep. so you know when it's all torn apart and they're they they're can here. they're here yep. and they can plan it because if they put that in as a solid wall they're going to have to come in yank sheetrock whatever off form you know frame for the windows it's going to be a lot more expensive than just doing it now but the windows are going in the science room right mm -hmm. i believe there was two in this one science room and one in the um other science room which we're not doing any work in right now right uh, right correct so this that would kind of be a separate area that they would be doing work yeah um, why does this process happen like this i mean this is quite a what if there were multiple bids? Are you still expected to turn around within the same board meeting and summarize all this information and for us to make a, a, it, a, a well-informed in decision? AOE, it's a change in how age, Agency of Education wants us to do the bid process. Usually we would have had bids due, I don't know, three or four days prior to the board meeting. They would drop them off at the office. Um, Brooke, uh, Casey, uh, Cheryl, and I would open them up. We'd be with our architect and we would go through them all and kind of analyze it. And then you'd have a board packet. Um, what, when was that, Casey? A few months ago, we yeah. were notified that you have to have bids. It has to be done at a done public at board a meeting. warned public board meeting. Mm -hmm. And the problem is the timeline of getting getting to where we need to be for. So you, you're saying that in theory, we could probably hold a, a second meeting Or you're saying right now that we can't, period, end of story, there's no money there? It's going to depend on the bid from the um, um, pump, station. pump station. Can I work with it within the budget? Probably. But we'll have to kind of reevaluate where operating expenses are coming from the schools for um, some of the smaller projects we do throughout the, the buildings. I'd have to reallocate some of that, that funding. If it doesn't rain, you're going to save a lot of money on lawn mowing this summer. So. Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I'm going to make a motion to accept the bid from. Oh, I've got the motion here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Why well, I think it has to be read specifically like this? I had done just. I had done a draft only because okay. I wanted it to say okay. about the agency of education. Okay. Read it. I'll read it. And, and it depends on if. You're doing windows or not. That's windows the only or not. The dollar figure I'm yelling, saying. So I'm going to read what I've got. And then okay. yep. the motion to approve a bid from Brad Loaf in the amount of $1,575,812 pending any necessary waiver which may be required by the Vermont Ag Agency of Education. Second. I'd like to make a motion to amend that to $1,618,000. I do that now. Include the windows. Well, uh, let's see. I don't so, think so. I, don't think so. I think your motion included uh, the exclusion of windows. Correct. Julie, Julie voted or Julie seconded that motion. So, point of order: uh, Peter's amendment uh, is a is a motion. Uh, it's a privileged motion. It's a motion that takes precedence over the original. Why is that? You have to pass the amendment and then pass the original motion. It's the way Robert's rules work. I'll well, second his amendment. I can't speak with authority on, on knowing exactly the, the proper procedure to accept that amendment from Peter. Uh, how that works. I guess I apologize. Well, he made it. He must know. And I second it because <laughs> I know. Well, I'm not 100 percent sure. I just heard people amid things, but I don't amid uh, amid, amid motions after a motion was made. Now, so I guess the the question is: some people want windows, some people don't, and some people might not want this project at all. 
Um, not that I don't want windows, but if there's not enough money to do the pump station when that comes around, because we took that money. Then you should vote project. against the amendment. Right. No, I'm just giving, we're having a conversation about it. I'm saying that's why, what if you don't have money to do the next project? So, Kurt, I'll defer to your expertise. So, if we were to vote on this motion and then amendment to motion. No, the amendment you... first, then the motion is how it's supposed to be. Okay. So, if you vote mine and it votes down, then we vote on tariffs. Okay. okay well, we can still vote it I, I guess I'm okay with that. So, there was a second to your amendment, Peter? Yes. And you did that? Okay. Have a conversation still about it before you vote? Well, you're, you're supposed to you vote. Discuss, discuss the amendment. Yeah, you're supposed to. So we're discussing the amendment now? Yes. 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 What I said. Yes. You mean the windows. Okay. All right. So discussion so, pertaining to the amendment to include the windows. So I have a question about the windows. Sure. So at first I heard that the windows, one of the rationales for doing the windows was that we were already in that area and the walls were coming down, I think, with the words that people used. Um, so it would be a less expensive um, procedure than if we waited. But then I heard that's not true, that there are at least one wall that the windows... The three windows are in a separate area of the middle school. So I guess what I'm saying is, and if you can just tell me, Chris, so if I'm putting this project together but the windows are over there, then if we had the money next year, we could do the windows over there once we had the money because they're not really dependent upon the original project. And that's why they're a bit of a They're in a different alone. location. They would not. Location, correct. Yeah, okay. it would not affect that area if we didn't do them. Thank you. Great. Glenn was saying that just in general, materials are going to uh, cost more next year. Well, we don't know that. We don't know anything about what's going to happen well, next year. So. Well, we, we don't know those <laughs> things yet. Those are such the chances are hypotheticals. They are. But and the other thing are. you have to consider yeah, is that the contractor labor, and the project you know, manager are here. Supervisors are, here. are on site. Sure, correct. I understand that. Yeah. And if we did this as a separate project, mm -hmm. that 42000 is going to increase even if the materials and labor don't. Mm -hmm. Just by having somebody here managing it. For sure. right. No, I completely understand that. Yep. Of course, the project takes place during the school year, so mm -hmm. we still have kids in the classroom while they're working on those windows. I would think not. So the plan would be to tackle that in the summer as fast as we can and get those openings in place uh, for <laughs> students to return. And then Ben has a plan to reallocate folks in different areas of the building during the construction in the locker room area. Um, but we do have enough spaces for folks, but there definitely would be movement and not ideal classroom space, but classroom space that will work uh, for folks. I have some concerns, as um, were mentioned by Tara, about the other projects that we have that are uh, possibly going to be very costly. And if we use funds that should be allocated for that project, we could run into a a problem. That is a project that has to be logistically has to be done. Period. Mm -hmm. yep. So, but you said that you might put up a different project, not this pump station. Pump station is going to happen no matter what. Going to have to this fall. I mean, it's it's been reported to the state has failed. It needs to be replaced. Yeah. So I mean, if you have to find the money, if the pump station is what you think it's going to be, which it's probably going to be, um, you'd have to find it somewhere else, and maybe not do a different project within the school. Mm -hmm. But don't we want to be fiscally responsible and say that, you know, we know that that pump project has to be done. So if the windows could be done at a different time, yes, and I love windows. Lord knows I would love the windows. But we also have lots of taxpayers who can be concerned about monies. So I think we need to think about that. And if we put up a little project, it could make that little project a much bigger project later on. Possibly. By by ignoring it, it could be even more than eighty thousand. Oh, you mean the pump project? No, no, no. no. no which one? The windows. Any little, Any projects, little projects that we put off to pay for the windows. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. To cover the money, yes. it, mm -hmm. a little project could turn into a really huge project. So I'd rather not have domino effects. I want windows, but. I would draw my second. Sorry. <laughs> I would draw my second. second. 
So that means we're not voting on it now? Yeah, I was just trying to read the room. <laughs> yeah, let's... I just think windows are important because the, the, the rooms down there, there's not a lot of windows already anyway. That's all. I just, it'd be really nice if the kids could have windows. And I, and I just, for the record, I don't disagree with that. No, I know you don't. I just no, disagree I with the mind. Really, yeah. In my opinion, the sooner the better. Bonnie, can you just note that Patty likes windows? I do like windows. <laughs> 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 it's very challenging. Yeah, I know. Bonnie, gonna, on your uh, last meeting, take a minute. Bonnie, I live in a really dark house. I hate it. Pick this one up. All right. Uh, so, all right, so if... Are there any more comments specific to the inclusion of windows? If not, we are going to vote on that amendment. Just the final thing I'd have to say, Tim. <laughs> there are other projects that we have budgeted for, like carpet and painting and, you know, things like that in each of the buildings. If that's where I would have to kind of take back some of this money until we know where we're coming in for the other project. Which is fine, but... Just there is going to have to be some reshuffling of, of funding. When do you, when do you expect you would know on this on the, the other like the pump station? We're trying to bid it out probably by the end of summer so we can get a fall install. Is the plan right now? Uh, and that's pending permitting process through the state of Vermont. We have to file for a, an amended permit, um, which has been filed, but we haven't gotten approval yet. So it's not going to be soon enough that we could no. approve the lower amount and then come back and say, okay, this, this is going to be low enough, let's do the windows. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it'll align, right? No. All right, so I'll call the question. All those in favor, and I'll probably ask you to raise your hand. All those in favor of accepting the amendment and second to accept the bid, uh, including the windows, please say aye and, and raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Am I counting that correct? Four people? And all those opposed? Okay. okay, so that amendment fails, which means we would then revert back to the initial motion made by Tara and second by Julie to accept the project, excluding the windows for just over 1.5 million. Is there any further discussion on that? Questions? Okay, all those in favor of accepting the bid from Redloaf to exclude the windows, just over $1.5 million, please say aye. 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 And those opposed? Okay, that motion goes. <clears throat> All right, so we're good on that, Chris? Yep, I think we're good, thank you. All right, so we're at number 22 now, I believe, which is other business. Understanding that there is no June 26th meeting, and we do have a couple of executive sessions still to follow. Yeah, I've got, I've got something for other business. There's a um, Board policy A33 says individual board members may visit schools periodically to expand their knowledge of school programs and staff and student needs. Um, I've requested, I'm supposed to notify the principal, which I did. Um, and the principal and the superintendent seem to be kind of slow walking this. We don't have much time left of school. Um, I. To be honest with you, I want to, in upfront, I want to visit the all program, see if things are are better since uh, since that teacher left, or or not so much, um, and, and the other classes she was teaching. So um, it does say concerns raised as a result of school visits by board members should be directed to the superintendent. But it doesn't it doesn't say the school board can deny this request. I don't think this, the way I interpret the policy is I think you're correct. Your, your request would go to the superintendent, in this case, Brooke, who has the right to accept or deny your request. I'm not sure what her response to that has been. 
Um, well, can we you, ask her now? If you're not satisfied with that, that response, you could always appeal to the school board. I would presume at the next scheduled board meeting and ask if there's a majority of the board who would like to dig it to give directive to the superintendent to allow that that visit. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we reinstate Megan Sullivan. Okay, Kurt, um, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna disallow your motion. I will just make a few comments uh, in alignment with your motion. Um, I guess it would be my understanding that it's not the board's position or within our ability to specifically hire, fire, or reinstate uh, an employee. Um, again, we leave that up to the discretion uh, and responsibility of the superintendent. So, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll allow your motion to stand if, if there should be a second. I don't even know if it would pass muster. Um, so with that as a, a kind of a backdrop to your motion, uh, does anyone want to speak or second a motion of that nature made by Mr. <coughs> Hire? Okay, there is no second to that motion. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to place the superintendent on paid leave pending a third party investigation into personnel management. Does anyone have any? Uh... Go ahead, John. Certainly. It seems to me that we're talking personnel matters that are not necessarily, we're not at liberty to discuss. In an open public meeting? Um, I, I think I would agree with you in that sense. Um, well, I would request an executive session for that. Okay. For what um, specifically? Do we need a specific? For the, for the second motion. Okay. So for so, personnel? Because it has to be a specific. You can't just say a yep. motion. Yes. I'd, I'd like to request uh, executive session for a personnel matter. Okay, so again, Kurt, um, just in reading statute and consulting with attorneys just today, a board member does have the right to make a motion to go into executive session for the appropriate reason. He's stating uh, personnel. Of course, in doing so, would require uh, a second uh, majority vote of the board to go into executive session for that reason. So I ask, is there a second to Mr. Hire's motion? So a second would reflect executive uh, session. A second would then be voted on by the board, and if the majority agrees, we would right. go into executive session yep. for that purpose. Yeah. So I'm questioning the reason for executive session. If it's based, if if it's for that motion, then there shouldn't be a second. Because he said originally, I'd like to go into executive session for that motion. You can't do that. He said, okay, personnel, because it has to be a specific reason. So if we're going in for personnel, then I guess I just, I'm confused as to the reason why we're going into executive session for personnel. I guess I just well, don't well, understand. Yet, so. I know, I know, but I just don't understand what, what the motion would be for. Well, I can't really say until we're in executive session. It's for personnel matters. Let's see where there's any additional board second on that to so, the motion for Mr. Heyer. Although I think it's really difficult in a situation like this, I, I don't understand what's going on right now. So I think it's really difficult if we don't have a conversation about it. I, I feel like we should have a conversation. I don't, I wouldn't want to second anything that would, um, would would make it seem as though I am in any agreement at all. However, I believe that not having a conversation is not in the best interest of a body of individuals who need to understand what's going on, because I have no clue. I agree with that. I don't know what's going on either. Don't know 
nothing can be voted on in executive session. No, I understand that. To make, a, to make mm -hmm. any kind of decision. Correct. No, 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 I completely understand that. I'm well, just saying that second. I wouldn't want my second for somebody to then say that I'm in agreement for anything that came out of but this. Quite often you know. a second is for the sake of discussion. Yes, and that, I guess that, up. so maybe maybe that's what I need to say, is I would, I would second it so that we can have a discussion. Okay, so that is a second? Correct. Okay, so there's a motion and a second to go into executive session, and we do have two other executive sessions as well, one for student matter and one for people personnel um, for the sake of discussion. Who, all those in favor of going into executive session for that reason? Which one are we going into executive session for? Let's well, start there. You're not, you're not supporting my motion. Um, you're just supporting, I guess, executive session. My, my question is, which okay. executive session are we are we going? Oh, there's two others. We're talking, about, yeah. we're talking about the personnel. Okay, this so this we're talking about this executive session. Yes. Not the two that were already on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, I just want to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> so all those in favor of going into the executive session for personnel reasons, please say aye. 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 And anyone opposed? Okay. So we're going to go into. Uh, as opposed to that? Yeah. Yes. That was yeah. Enough. I just yes. so. No. Who's the executive session including? I think it should just be the board. Okay. Is the board Okay. So we got a number of executive sessions tonight. We're starting right now with personnel. 